I'm here in divorce court to figure the situation out with my husband. My biggest pet peeve with Kay is she talks too much. When I first met Dwayne, he was fun and free and into us. Now it's more like just him. I do <laughs> live as a single man in so many ways. To save our marriage, Dwayne just has to change. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Kay Upchurch and Dwayne Upchurch. The two of you have been married for nine years, together for 16, but you are calling it a day. We're going to talk about why this marriage is ending, so I want to talk to you, Ms. Upchurch. Why don't you tell me what's wrong? I have an absent husband. Absent husband. In what sense is he absent? He just not at home. Okay. I call, Give me he the don't progression, because I'm sure he showed up, like, after the wedding, he was there. Right. Okay. Okay, so now How look, did now he we start look... to become missing. Okay, so let's get one story. Uh so his mom dies. Mm hmm And I get a room, because I know he has a problem with the kids. So, you know, I knew at this time, you know, kind of get, you know, get a, get that little wait time. And I was like, okay. We get to the repast, and he was just like, go get the room and kind of brush me off, because and you know, he got family there and stuff. So I went and got the room and sat there and waited. And waited, and, and waited. He never came. And he came late, drunk, okay. you know. Yeah. But didn't embrace me though, and that's what makes him absent. I want to clear up a few things. You say kids, like two or three. <laughs> Between the two of them, they got twelve. <gasps> How many of them are in the house right now? Right now, seven. Seven. And nine of the children are ones you had before you married her. Correct. And three of them are the same age, but they're not triplets. Correct. <laughs> Yo, what are you doing? Well, I know what you're doing, but uh, anyway, Mr. Upchurch, what do you say in response to her accusation that you are simply absent? Well, as far as my mother passing, um, I just needed a little time and space. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't feel like I should have to answer to anybody or, you know, any of that when I know I was going to come off wrong to somebody and then hurt somebody else in the mm -hmm. process of me grieving. Yeah. So I was trying to give it a little space, but I did show up. Maybe I showed up late, but I showed up. You get a pass when your mom dies. Right. You do ludicrous things you, because that's your mother. And it's like, wow. But then how about every day since then? He didn't come back home at all? No. Every day since then, it's not that. It's like, I thought, see, his mom, before she died, was like, hey, it's going to be all right. You strong. That Saturday, and then she died, that threw me off. He did not, it's like he did not think I had emotions about it. He went to his other woman. He didn't come to me. And that Did you have feeling. another woman at the time? Oh, I had a friend, but ain't no, ain't nothing like, nothing like, <laughs> there we go. So you weren't at her house? I didn't pull up there and you weren't there? I got a picture to prove it. That, you pulled up at the house? Yeah. And she he was there? Yes. Yeah, and the crazy part about it is, it just so happened, I had just so happened to come to get there. Every and time? And she pulled up. Every time? Well, she'd have been five minutes later, five minutes earlier, you wouldn't have seen me. Ironic. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, let me ask you God, this, Mr. Upchurch. <laughs> Have you, during the course of your marriage, been unfaithful to Mrs. Upchurch? No, I can't say that. I mean... You now, 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 if you, you ask me, you ain't been faithful. I wouldn't have to wonder <laughs> about it. So there, there's I some issue there. You're talking to me, not you. Right. M Mr. It Upchurch, go ahead. Hush. Um, I ain't gonna say I, I try to take care of home. As much as I can, so... I but... try to take care of home as much as I can is your response to have you ever cheated? Oh, yeah, I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Right. It's that simple. See how simple that was? Is it yeah, a regular thing with you? Mm, mm Yes, it is. How is it not regular? You're there all the time. You ain't been at home. Where you been? Oh. Are you I living at home right now? Hang on, hang on. Car. No, hey, hey, hey. You can, you can holler at him at home on your own time. <laughs> he don't be there. You're, you don't currently live in the house with her, correct? Nope. Nope. How long has it been since you've lived with her? A month, so. He's been all gone all summer. And why aren't you there? I just feel like I'd be 
pressured and stressed a lot, you know, so I kind of... Tell me, well, tell me what it's like at home. Why do you feel pressured and stressed? Well, my wife, she seems to let kids do whatever they want to do. If I say don't do something, and if I leave and come back, and she know that they ain't supposed to have done it, she let them done it anyways. Uh, and being in certain areas in the house, it's not kid friendly, and I say don't nobody be in there, she allow it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if something happened, it's my fault, because, but I already stated don't nobody do this, or don't touch this, or leave my things alone. But she sometimes just be so careless about what's going on. She's too lenient. To her heart, she got a good heart. Now, I'm not saying that would take It's just too soft. Mr. Upchurch, it's an interesting response. If you believe that she's raising the children in the home too leniently, your response is not to step up and be the disciplinarian. Your response is to bounce. When I how, ask for help. How, how when is I that? For help. How, I how is that cool? Teenagers. Mrs. Upchurch, I do not need any assistance from you. Mr. Upchurch? It, it's not cool. But I'm. I'd be stuck, you know what I'm saying, uh, rocking a hard spot. You're the adult. You're the man. You're the guy in charge. You can decide. I mean, at one point, there were six kids in my house. Everybody knew where they couldn't go. There was discipline because my husband I and I were like, well, more my husband than me because I, I was a bit of a softy, but that brother wasn't letting nothing wrong happen. That's your me. gig. Why don't you, why don't you take want it? that job. It's... Why don't you want to do that job? It's still. But it, when your husband... It's, it's what? When your husband left, you, you still main... What he said goes, right? I do do that, though. What he said went, even if he wasn't... Like, he was at work doing... Working, mm -hmm. and he told everybody not to do something, and you was the wife. You said it's not going to get done because your dad said not to do it. Mm -hmm. And I do do that. I've never stepped on your toes. There's been plenty of times where things has been touched, and I say, and she knows that not supposed to be touched. My son touched. said one time. <laughs> but you know they say. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> my husband told my son to do something one time, and he, says, and he says, and I don't care what your mother said, I'm coming home tonight. Boom. <laughs> one sentence. It ain't that hard. You just got to be willing. And you're not. Let's talk about finances. I pay the rent. I pay the lights, the gas, the water, trash, food. You know what the light bill is. You know what the rent is. You know how many kids are in the house. Why should she have to ask? You should just be general. Here, babe, this should go towards it. Ms. Zuff Church. I'm sorry. Ms. Upchurch, you say not only is he physically absent, but he's also financially absent. Why don't you tell me why you say that? Because I carry all the burden. Like, he got paid $500. First of all, he didn't even tell me he got the check. He said he did, but I missed mm -hmm. that whole thought process he had got it. I just was $150 short. Called him. He said, oh, I got that. He brought it to me, complained about it, so I threw him $30 more dollars back. You know what I'm saying? But then, like, it's it's like he don't even think in his head, this man works almost, we were both work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You're telling me you can't bring $25, $30 home? If you make daily money, you should bring something home daily mm -hmm. to us because I pay all the bills. The All the other money that was supposed to come through ain't came through, so I've been fitting it. Fitting it, fitting it, fitting it, broke. I work two jobs now since he left the house to take care of me and kids that are not even mine. And mine's. And it's not fair for him to party, buy shoes, buy clothes, drink, and have fun, fix his car, where I gotta... Then he complain about the cars and complain about this, but that's the only responsibility I actually put on him. I figure I pay, if I pay the rent, I pay the lights, the gas, the water, trash, food, all that. I stop cooking, I stop cleaning, I stop doing all of that. You don't want to do nothing, I ain't got to do my job either. It's not fair. <laughs> Mr. Upchurch, your response to that? I always give whatever I can. Whatever I can. Can your children eat whatever you can? When, when, when they ask me for food, I, I mean, she asked me to buy my kids something to eat, I go and get them something to eat. Don't you feel an obligation to be a substantial 
breadwinner and contributor to the household in which you have children. You don't feel you don't feel obligated like that. I do. That's why. But you don't do it's it. It's not like. Well, if if I don't ask, it don't help. It's like that's what I'm don't, saying. Yeah. But now, now if she don't ask, it don't help. Why does she have to ask? Why should she have to ask? You know what the light bill is. You know what the rent is. You know how many kids are in the house. Why should she have to ask? You should just be general. Here, babe, this should go towards it. Ms. Zupchurch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see a little bit of why he ain't home. I so just right. but not, that he had, not that he's right, years. but I can see it a little bit. We have Queen Walker here. This is your daughter, and I want you to come forward, please. What do you see, Mr. Upchurch's contribution to the home being? He's not there. He's not there. No. And I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for all 12 of us, because we grew up like that. It, it ain't no, I'm my mama's child. Nah, that's my father. Right. So when you got an eight-year-old sister and a four- and five-year-old sister coming to you like, I don't even got no parents. My daddy not home. M M Mr. Upchurch, did you hear what she just said? Mm-hmm. Does that bother you at all? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get a business, if my, my, my things together to, to be successful and to take care of my family. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm not, I don't have plans. I don't have, I'm not putting no kind of nothing in but process. I'm part of though. I'm being... listen, 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 let me tell you something. You, you, you're talking that nonsense to the wrong woman. My father was very successful, but his behind was always home. At, at, the, at the end of the day, he might go early, come back late, but he was concerned about his wife and his children, and all of his money came to the house. All of his money came to us. All of his money was about what we needed and what we wanted, and he all and his his duties and his provisions. It was all about us. We didn't have to wonder where's daddy. We didn't have to wonder does daddy love us. There was no issue. So what I'm asking you is, how can you feel? at all, like a man of value, when you are letting your family down in so many different ways? Well, I be pulled a lot of different ways. I mean, like, I got a lot of kids, I try. But they're all at our house. They're not at the other house. You ain't living with any of your kids, are you? Right. She don't got no kids. She ain't even part of the problem. You living with somebody who has no kids. <laughs> She got kids. Wow. Okay. She got kids. I, 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 there's something that's really bothering Queen, and she wants to talk about it. So the next thing I'm going to do is allow Queen to express herself. He always not coming on time. It's always, ugh, I don't want to do this with y'all. Walk off, leave. You, you're not an evolved father. How would you feel if your spouse was never around to help take care of your children? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Queen, I understand you have some things on your heart that you would like to share with him. Okay, so the first one, like, why do you be a father to other people's kids more than your own? Who father? Who am I fathering though? Nobody, nobody okay, so for instance, my you, little nobody, sister they kids don't go to school. For so for instance, one of my sisters, they went to school. So him and another one of his girls and they kids went out, had a little outing. They took pictures. They had fun. They did all of that. Every event we have, he always late. He always not coming on time. It's always, ugh, I don't want to do this with y'all. Walk off, leave. Because you got a disrespectful little and y'all keep... But he not always there. Oh, you, you, okay. But he but, not but, but, always I, 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 you, You're not an involved father being a defender and a protector. It's like the peoples they choose to bring around me are the peoples that are not for us. Yeah. So I understand like, that, but so you're why in do you put me in this situation? Because you didn't raise them right. You didn't and raise them. They call them. me when it's just me, you, and my family, you and my kids. Yeah, Don't okay. call me when you got everybody and they they crap going on. Call me when you. you out with our kids, I, not with our kids. I got kids you. I got you. Crap. You know but you don't. Got, hey, okay, hey, we did it though. Hey, hey. Please have a seat, Queen. We're gonna move forward. I'm gonna say what I got to say and then I'm gonna leave it alone. 
What would you do if your spouse started staying out all night and not coming home? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Life is not fair. Sure, so, right? It's not. Lots of time, it ain't no fun. But the only thing you can control is what you can control, and you can control yourself. If what you want is him, what you need to do is get people who don't belong in the house out of the house. Now, I, no, 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 that, 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 that. I personally wouldn't be bothered because he's demonstrated to me that he's not committed. And part of the reason that your house is in chaos is he didn't do his dad thing when he was supposed to back in the day. I can't but I, I brought a dude in my house, my father, they'd still be looking for my body parts. <laughs> you know, but that was the father's gig. I said the that fact that you had to, no, no, but, house, but, but back from the day, from, from, from baby on, you have to be there constant and steady and, and on it. And, and, and he didn't. And he didn't do that. So he reaped. He reaped some of this. But I'm saying, you, if you want him back, which I wouldn't. But if you want him back, <laughs> you gotta solve that. You have to be the author of your own story. True. And, and I have to give up. And it's okay. It. And you have to shut up too. I know, right? She won't do that. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to give you information that'll give you what you want, even if it, even if I don't think it's rational. But you can't hear. You can't listen. I know you're under a lot of stress. I know a lot is going on in your house, and you're upset, and you're angry. But you can't learn. You can't change. And until you can learn and change, your circumstances won't change. You'll just be loud in the same mess that you're already in. You can't engage in the joyous process of creating children and not stick around to care for the children you create. This is what happens to you when you do bare minimum. This is what happens to you when you have a whole lot of kids and no structure and no capacity and no interest in making them their primary source of life. This is what happens. And you have to own it. You have to deal with it. If I were you, I would... I don't know, there was this, this, this song about if you don't love me, let me go. Let her go. I ain't never Let, gonna tell nobody I don't love my wife. I love my wife. No, but if you're not gonna treat her right, if you're gonna just cause her pain and heartache and running off with other women and throwing a couple dollars here and there, that's so hurtful to her soul. It makes her feel like nothing. It makes her feel like she's not valuable. It makes you feel she's under pressure. She's under stress. She can't move forward. She can't find joy because she's still begging you to be just some kind of husband and a father, and that's terrible. You need to be man enough to say, hey, this is what I can if I'm gonna be your husband, I'm going to be your husband. Or if I can't be your husband, I'm going to be man enough to walk off. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do. This matter is adjourned. So he didn't really take much responsibility back there. Is it time to just move on and give up? I was the best. Do you think Judge Lynn got through to him? Nope, but she didn't to me. And what are you going to walk away with today, then? I need to shut up. So, anything you want to say that, that uh, nah, I you mean, get a chance to? Women going to say what they want to say, so... <laughs> Especially man, she talk too much. So I'm going to leave it at that.